So I've recently been working on a few projects where I have to generate data when I actually store something within Laravel uh, again and again and again. And this is data that comes from data I'm already saving. Now that probably doesn't make sense. I'm gonna give you a rough example and then we're gonna look at how we can solve this in a few different ways. So let's say for example, somewhere in a controller and I'm just gonna do this within the roots for now. Uh, I was creating a forum topic. Well, obviously when we are saving something out within Laravel, either using this or using the create method directly uh, on a model name, we would say something like title and then we would assign this to whatever's been provided when we go ahead and create this. And then alongside a topic, we might also have something like a slug. Now you may know that you can use the str slug helper within Laravel to pass through exactly the same thing that you're trying to store. And then uh, in this case, since we have newed up a topic model on its own, we would go ahead and call save. So either way that you do this, whether you use topic create and then pass an array through, you would have to every time you created a topic, go ahead and pass this in manually calling str slug. So sometimes these things get a little bit annoying. This is a really simple example, but you may have other circumstances where you are wanting to save something from data that you already have. And that's what I meant by the explanation at the start of this video. So what we're gonna be doing in this part, we're just gonna set up really basic functionality to store a topic. We're gonna to look at the problem uh, once again, and then we're gonna look at a few solutions to get around this. So the first thing I want to do is just come over to the projects I'm working in. I'm gonna go ahead and make a migration here, or in fact, what I could do is make a model. So create a topic model and also generate a migration alongside that. So let's just come over to this create topics table migration, go ahead and store what we need. And we're gonna keep this really, really simple just for the sake of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a string here. I'm not gonna relate this back to a user cause we're just kind of uh, looking at this as an example. So let's go ahead and migrate this. I'm gonna come over to EMV and just switch this over. I'm currently using Postgres. Uh, so I'm just gonna switch over the port as well here too. And also the database name as well. Okay, so if we go and run our migration, so PHP Artisan migrate, let's go over to the database, just check this out and you can see that we have our table in there. And of course, because we generated that model, we also have this just here too. So over in roots and web, let's actually go ahead and store this and then we'll move on to look at a couple of solutions. So once again, you can either use topic model on its own and use the static create method, or what I like to do is go ahead and create a new topic explicitly and then start to set properties on this. So let's say the title uh, was just again, hello there. And again, this would come from your request data. So if you're working within a controller, you would have your request object in here and you would obviously pass uh, this directly into here, but just for now, we'll go ahead and hard code it. And we would go ahead and like we've already seen, use str slug to pass in whatever a user has provided. And then we go ahead and we just save that out. So if we just prefix this with app, just so uh, we don't break anything, come over to the browser, give that a refresh, and over in the database, we see this here. So regardless of what you're doing, this could become uh, not a problem, but it's a lot more convenient when you have data like this that you need to hook into uh, eloquent model events, you may wish to do this, uh, you know, kind of get rid of this step altogether just to make your life a lot easier. And of course, there are countless reasons why you might want to do that. And once we've finished the uh, short series, we'll see that we can hook in any kind of uh, event that we want, whether it's assigning data, uh, firing a separate event within Laravel, sending an email, whatever you want to do, we're gonna cover it. So let's jump over to the next part and take a look at the first solution of doing this, which will help you out later on. So the first solution that we're gonna look at is not necessarily the best solution, but it does have its place depending on what you want to do. So what I'm gonna do is hop over to the topic model and we're gonna create a mutator. And by this, I mean that within our model, we can define out that when we get, which is an accessor or set, we can use an accessor or mutator. So in this case, we would say, well, when we're setting the title attribute on this model, we're gonna get through a value because we know that we're going ahead and setting it. So if I just do a die dump on value here, we know that over here we are setting this here. Now, if I come over and refresh, you can see that we actually get that value dumped out. So uh, this is basically something that you could use to hook in the creation of a slug alongside a title. Now, the only problem here is that 
the way that we set things is we say this attributes we go ahead and define the actual attribute in this case it's title and then we set it to that value and this is useful if you wanted to maybe uh, make the title all lowercase uh, if you wanted to change this title in some way and of course this will work with any attributes that you're setting now the only problem here is that we can set the slug in here but we also have to set the title as well so we could do something like this we could say str slug value so we're taking the title slugifying it and setting it to slug and therefore when we save this model the attribute will be set and that will be stored in the database so if we just get rid of this slug here or at least comment it out so we can go ahead and have a look we know that this is stored in the database here let's get rid of this one first of all and come over and see what we get now so you can see that this will have done exactly that now the reason this is uh, not the best solution is that we actually have to do this as well and you can imagine that your model if you were doing this multiple times for different attributes would literally get filled up and that's not always great it looks a little bit messy and really this kind of thing isn't meant for doing this it's more meant for just the attribute that you're setting so that's one solution and this does have its place like i said if you wanted to do anything with the value that you're currently setting you could do this and what i would also do is probably extract this out to a trait and use it within your topic model rather than go ahead and define them all here i would create a trait for this personally just to keep things nice and tidy Either way, that is the simplest way that we could do this, but not the most clean. In the next part, we're going to take a look at how we can set up a simple observer to actually do this. Okay, so we've established that this probably isn't the best solution. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this from the model. We're not going to touch the model at all. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is rather than do this here, once again, we're going to set up an observer for an action on a model, at least an event on a model. So if you weren't aware that when you go ahead and new up, say, a topic or use the create method, uh, Eloquent will actually fire events that we can listen to. So just as a really quick example, if we come over to providers and say app service provider, under the boot method, we could actually pull in this model and we could go ahead and observe a particular event on this model. So we have things like creating, which is while the model is being created. We have created once it's been created. We have things like saved or saving if you were kind of saving something out, uh, updating, updated, all of that kind of stuff. Now, in our case, when we're creating a topic, maybe we want to do something to this topic. And we know that we do want to do that. We want to go and we want to add a slug in. So in this case, what we have is a callback. And in the next part, we're going to look at setting up a class for these kind of observers to tidy things up if you wanted to do lots of different things rather than bunging them all inside of this provider. Now into here, we get a topic. So from here, if we just do a die dump on this topic, we know that when we go and create this, we should see uh, this in here. So let's go ahead and refresh. And you can see here, we do in fact get that topic. And that means that what we can do is we can kind of intervene in the creation of this topic so all that means is taking the topic that we receive in here and doing something with the property much better solution we've not had to update our model we're just creating a separate listener for this event so now all we need to do is go ahead and say str slug because we have that topic in there we can still grab the title and that is pretty much it we're done so while this is being created this will happen and then when we go and save it, we will have that property in there. So we can get rid of that line there, go over to our page, give this a refresh, refresh the database, and you can see it's worked in exactly the same way. Now, this is all well and good, but sometimes if you were, you know, having a lot of events here, if you had lots of models you were listening to things on, you can imagine this is going to get pretty crazy. So we're going to quickly look at how we would create a separate provider for this, which would at least be the first step in keeping this a little bit tidier rather than putting everything in our app service provider, because it's highly likely that you'll have other things inside of here as well. So what we would do is uh, if you're not familiar with uh, providers and making them, you would come over here uh, to the command line and use Artisan to make a provider. And I would call this something like eloquent event service provider. And of course, you can choose any name you want. And if things did get super crazy, you could create a separate one for each model. I wouldn't really recommend doing that, but uh, we'll take a look in the next part at how we create that class. It will be a little bit cleaner anyway. So now that we have this, we need to obviously register this over in config app alongside all of our other providers. So let's go all the way down 
And just under here, let's go ahead and pull this in. So I'm gonna duplicate this down and give the name of that new service provider. So now we have a kind of separate space to do what we've done over here. So I can take this and leave this kind of alone and go ahead and place it in here instead. And that means that at least we've separated it away from everything else. Now still though, we're gonna end up in the situation where we have lots of different events for lots of different models. So how do we solve that? Well, we're gonna cover that in the next part and do pretty much exactly the same here, but with a little bit more flexibility and uh, make this a little bit tidier. Now we've established that this solution is a lot better, but still we already know that we're gonna run into problems later if we need lots of events for lots of models. So we solve this with model observers and we're gonna take a look uh, behind the scenes in Laravel as well to look at kind of how this works. So uh, when we generate an observer, we can't actually do this on the command line. Laravel doesn't have a command to generate a model observer. So we have to kind of do this manually, but it's not too much trouble because really all it is is substituting this callback for a particular class. So in the app directory, what I would typically do, and I think this is uh, out in the manual as well, is create an observers folder. Now inside of here, I would create an individual observer for each type of model. Now in this case, we have a topic, so we would create a topic observer, but in the case of anything else, a post, a user, you can do exactly the same thing. So we won't be covering that, but once you know how to do this, you know how to do it for any model you need. So let's set up the namespace. So it's now under app and observers, and let's go ahead and fill this in. So topic observer, and we're done. So now to actually register this observer, before we create any methods on here, how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Instead, what we do is we use observe. So what we're now doing is we are replacing this with the full class path. So in this case, you could either import this at the top or say something like app observers and then say topic observer. Now, if you were going ahead and doing this for a user, you may do the following. So user and then user observer. Maybe you had a post. You would do exactly the same thing. You kind of get the idea. The only difference now though is that however many we register of these in here, it really doesn't matter too much because we're not uh, adding all of our logic in here as well as our individual observers. So this makes things a little bit cleaner. It's unlikely that you're gonna have hundreds of models. So really this keeps things nice and tidy. So we're at the point where we have um, an eloquent event service provider, completely separate provider, and now we're linking this to a class. So what do we do over in this class? Well, we just do the same thing, but we define these out as methods. It's as simple as that. We're just replacing the method call that we did earlier with a class with individual methods. So in our case, we would say creating. We again receive a topic into this and we can type hint this as well for a little bit of uh, strict checking. So let's go ahead and use app topic. And then in here, we just do exactly what we want to do. But now we can do anything in here and it doesn't really matter because we're in a separate class. So in this case, all I would want to do is say topic and set the slug. And just before we do this, let's go ahead and die dump on the topic just so we can see that this does actually work. So we've set this up, all looks good, and we can come over and check this out, give that a refresh and we get that topic again. Now, if we come over to the uh, model that we extend when we create any models, this is again part of the Laravel framework, and we check out this observe method. Uh, let's take a look at this. You can see here that we obviously pass in that class that we've just defined. Uh, and then in this case, we are checking if the event that we're listening on, so in here we are using get observable events. Let's just take a look at this. So these are all of the observable events within Laravel. So we can use any of these uh, if we need to. So back to the observe method in the same class, iterating through each of them observable events, if that particular method exists on the observer that we've created. So for example, if uh, a topic is being restored maybe, so we would have a restored method. If it is being restored, but the method doesn't exist, there's no point registering an observer for it. And we register the event just here. So again, this is uh, in the same class, so we can just come over to this. And all this is doing is at listening for eloquent dot the name of the event and then going ahead and running what we've defined 
inside of these methods. So have a really good look through this if you are interested in kind of diving into the uh, the scenes, behind the scenes of any of these classes within Laravel. It's always a good idea to do. Either way, we kind of know how this works now. If, say, a topic is being created and uh, the observer that we've registered exists or the method on the observer we've registered exists, then we know we're going to run it. So in this case, then let's go ahead and say topic slug, set this to str slug, passing in the topic title. It just works in exactly the same way and we are done. So now come over here, give that a refresh and over in the database, we get what we need. So we finally ended up at this kind of solution and this is the best solution because it allows us to write as much logic or code in here that we need to uh, go ahead and separate it out from uh, either our app service provider or in fact this provider here. So I think for smaller applications, there's nothing wrong with doing topic creating in here and passing in a closure. I wouldn't say don't do that, but if things start to get a little bit crazy, break these out into observers, or if you're kind of looking ahead to the future, go ahead and create an observer now just to keep things easy to update uh, later on. Either way, that is just a really simple idea of setting a slug for a topic every time we create it. But of course, now you're free to do anything you like. And of course, if you need to remind yourselves of what is being observed, so what's being listened to, all the different events, then of course, you can come over to here, follow it down, and we know that we have this get observable events method. So we can go in, just open this, and uh, check these out just here.